This is Cade Lish. On October 6, 2012, he would get into a fight with another man named Jeremiah Pays. During the fight, Cade would pull out a knife and stab Jeremiah over 13 times. Cade would flee the scene before the police could arrive, and he spent the night at his girlfriend's house. The next day, friends of Cade would call the police after watching the morning news. The police would find Cade at his home, and they would ask him if he would come in for questioning. What kind of things do you do on your days off? On my days off? Well, I don't get many. I get Sunday off. Oh, well, are you supposed to be at work today? Yes. Did you did you call in? or? Yep. I, I actually, I was uh, at Candy Crest with my boss. Oh. So, and he had left, and... Immediately after all this happened, I tried to call him. My phone died, and then I, oh, as soon as I got home and plugged it in, I let him know, and I called him before I came, came down. Here. Oh, what's his name? Derek. Derek Foot. Derek Foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he knows. Uh, did you tell me you just weren't coming in at all today, or going to be late, or what did you tell? I texted him and I said I'm pretty beat up, and and I may not make it in. If if I do, I'll get in there as soon as I can. I talked to him this morning, and I said I'll. Try to get there as soon as I can, but there's no guarantees. So. Okay. He, he was okay with that? Yeah. Okay. The detective started by asking Cade questions that have nothing to do with the crime. He wants to see how Cade will react when he isn't lying. The detective has also kept information from Cade. He hasn't told him that Jeremiah died from the knife wounds. As far as Cade knows, he is being questioned for an assault on another person. Hello. Well, like I said, uh, we just kind of figured out what happened out there tonight, and uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much TV or whatever you watch, but typically, uh, you know, before you talk to a detective or anything like that, they usually advise you of your Miranda rights. Sure. Are you familiar with those? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and advise you of your Miranda rights because okay. it's kind of standard operating procedure. Anytime sure. I talk to somebody, it protects you, it protects me, it protects everybody involved. Um, but it makes you aware of kind of what's going on, okay? Detectives always have to make sure a suspect is aware of their rights. But for some, being read your rights can be very scary. Most people believe that being read your rights means you have been arrested and you are being charged with a crime. The truth is, police officers are required to remind you of your rights anytime you are being questioned about a crime. To make it less terrifying, they will use phrases like, just like on TV or standard procedure. They are hoping that the suspect will not invoke their rights and ask for a lawyer. Uh, the first, first one is you have the right to remain silent. Sure. You understand what that means? Yep. Um, uh, anything you say uh, can and will be used against you in a court of law. Okay. You have the right to have an attorney present with you while you're being questioned. Okay. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you at no cost. Okay. And you have the right to stop answering questions at any time. Sure. Do you understand those rights? I do. Okay. And you're down here voluntarily on your own? You, yes. You, yes, sir. You volunteered to come down here and talk to us? Yes. And uh, tell us what happened? Okay. And uh, I, I would like to know what happened tonight. Okay. Um, could I ask you a question? Sure. Is this guy okay? Is he... Um, you know, I haven't heard the latest on him yet. Okay. Uh, but obviously he was involved in the fight as well. And uh, so I'm just trying to piece it together what happened. Okay. And uh, you know, once I get some more information, I'll let you know. Sure. Okay. Um, Cade asks about Jeremiah, wondering if he is okay. The detective knows he is dead, but he needs to make sure Cade believes he is alive. If the detective decided to openly lie to Cade and say Jeremiah is fine, a good lawyer could use that in court. So instead, he tells Cade that he hasn't heard the latest. If Cade found out he was being questioned regarding a murder charge, there is a good chance he would invoke his rights. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just like to know, kind of, from your, your point of view as to what happened tonight, how this started. Sure. Um, like I said, I was there with my boss. Um, <clears throat> I got dropped off there from some of my friends. I was there for a few hours. What time did you get down there? My buddies were going to a movie, and I think it started at, I'm not sure, it started at 9 or 
and they were going to go see a movie. Yeah, they were going. They were going to go see a movie, and they wanted me to go, but my boss, I wanted to hang out with him. So they they dropped me off at Candy Crush. Candy Crush. Okay. Yeah. And that was around nine. Yeah, I'm going to say somewhere around nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what happened from there? From there, I went in. Um, met Derek, sat down, a few other guys I work with were there, um, had some drinks, talked, and eventually everybody, you know, it was time to go home. We both had to work today, so we decided to go home. I went outside, and I was talking to a random girl that she, she, I think she had a cousin that I went to school with, anyway, I was talking to her, and... Do you know her name? I can't, I can't, I can't remember her name. Okay. And it was outside, though? Yeah, it was right out front, yeah, right out front. Okay, and, uh, Derek, right? Mm -hmm. Your boss, he had already left? Yeah, he was gone. Did he, how did he, did he drive, or did he get cabbed? Uh, I'm not sure, you know, because I, we were all talking and everything, and he was like, I thought he was going to go home. When I went out back on the patio, and I was talking to some people, and by the time I came back in, he had already left. So I'm not sure how he... Now we got home. I know he leaves here. He lives pretty near to Cannon Crest in some apartments. So he may have walked. I'm not sure. Okay. The detective is not the only manipulator in this room. Kate is about to describe his interaction with Jeremiah, and he makes sure to make himself look like a victim. He needs to convince the police that he is an upstanding citizen who acted in self defense. So you're out front, you're talking to uh, yeah, some girl, you, you know, her cousin or something? Yeah, she, I went to school with her cousins, you know, and we got to talking, and, and a kid came out, and I was talking to her, and he said something, and I can't remember, it was something derogatory, something negative, he said something negative, and I looked over, and I recognized him, and I recognized that this kid had started, uh, and started some drama before at a bar, and I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what his name is. He just knows my my friend Cade. They're they're like previous acquaintances or something. Okay. Anyway, so, he, so you've seen this kid before? I have seen him before, yes. And, and last was, time that I saw him was at the pocket. And he had started some drama there. What do you mean by drama? Just saying derogatory, negative things, trying to start a fight, basically. Okay. Do you recall anything like what he would have said? Uh, I, I remember what he said at the pocket uh, when I saw him previously. He's what did he say then? <clears throat> and this wasn't the same night. This is where I go. Right. He he told me that you know my best friend. His name is Cade. My name is Cade. We're always with each other. He he made a statement that we might uh, he figured that we were gay because we hang out with each other so much and and some buddies that you know that joined in on that and I've never even met the kid and, you know he's called me gay anyway that's what started the whole deal and that's that's where I recognize him from did uh did it ever get physical over at the pocket at the pocket no he he did have some friends that told me they're they gonna wait for me in the parking lot and but when I left they weren't there they didn't see me I don't know they weren't there so and this was a couple weeks ago yes okay so you're you're outside Candy Crest and outside Candy Crest and talking to a girl and he, this kid says something again he, yeah he says something negative and I look over and recognize him and say, oh you're that kid that called me my buddy gay from the from the pocket yeah and from there you know he he said something I said something we got into a discussion getting kind of heated um, uh, his girlfriend, I remember her, you know, getting pretty heated too. Do you know her name? I don't. I don't know her name. Okay. I'm not even sure what his name is. And he, he may have told me, but I can't, can't remember. Anyway, we, we're getting into a pretty heated discussion. Wait for my cab. Cab pulls up, but it's somebody else's and they take off. And so you, you'd call the cab by this point? Yeah, I called the cab. I called the cab inside the bar, okay. and I was outside just waiting for Just her. waiting for Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, my cab gets there, and here's here's where I'm getting confused, because I'm trying to piece everything back together, and I'm not sure if we got, if we got in the altercation, the scuffle, the physical scuffle, before I tried to get in the cab, or after, because 
I, I tried to get in the cab, and the cab driver said, you know, no, you're not going. And he, he kicked me out of the cab, basically. What, why did he say that? Yeah, here's the thing. I, I'm not sure if we if we had already got a phys physical altercation or if 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 maybe we were in the me and this kid were you know in a heated discussion yelling at each other. But the cab driver, either way, was like, no, you're not going with me. You're staying. He drove off. But I can't. I cannot remember if it if if it was after we got physical or before. I can't, okay. Can't but, it, but at some point you did get physical with this guy? Yes. Was it just one guy? I, th I think so. Um, I remember I, I got hit. I remember I got hit. Um, I got hit multiple times. My jaw is pretty sore. I know I got hit pretty pretty good amount of times. Um, and it went, I remember it went down to the ground and I'm not sure if I got, if somebody's kicking me or it, I remember I remember when I was getting hit, I was thinking there's multiple people kicking me. Because he was talking about, you know, when we were in a heated argument, he was talking about his buddies and how they were going to throw a blanket party on me and they are going to stomp me down. Then I don't Tonight, know. just prior to yes. the physical, he was making comments about his buddies taking care of him. Yep, him and his buddies. But you didn't see anybody I, else? No, it, the only thing, I guess I got hit and I was kind of dazed and I was getting hit and hit and hit. And it was in my mind that there was more than one person back. I don't remember looking up the scene. You know, I don't know if his girlfriend kicked me or if she's kicking me. Or you know, hopefully there's surveillance or videotape. I'm not sure. It was in my mind that I was getting kicked by like two or three people and getting hit. Cade looks up at the detective, searching for a reaction to his statement. Cade knows he has to do his best to make him believe that he was in fear for his life. The detective's job is to make sure that Cade was able to leave the altercation without having to use his knife, so that way he can charge Cade with murder. The interrogation continues with Cade trying to prove he had no choice but to use the knife, and the detective trying to prove that Cade could have left the scene. It, what, and when you're getting kicked, what, what position were you in? I remember, you know, I got punched, I kind of wrestled around, um, I want to say I went down to my knees, he was kind of, kind of down to his knees, uppercutting me. So were you on top of him? I, you know, I'm, I'm you know. not sure. You know, I got hit. I got, he whacked me pretty good. I was dazed and adrenaline and having a few drinks. It's just kind of a blur, you know. I just remember getting hit and telling me, you, you guys going to get off me and I'm going to stick you. I'm going to stick you. You guys going to get off me. And that's, that's what I remember. That's it. Other than that, um, I remember him bleeding, and I remember seeing the blood trail and, and uh, being kind of scared. Uh, I grabbed my cell phone. I think I took off running. I tried to call. I was either I, call, I tried to call my boss or I was dialing 911. My phone died. It was one of those two, but my phone my phone was gone. And then I walked clear to where I was found, probably six seven miles. A problem with this case is why didn't Cade call the police and report what had happened? Before the detective has a chance to ask, Cade tells him that his phone died during a seven-mile walk home. He also says that he stopped at a local gas station, which would have been a good place to find a phone. The detective ignores this because he needs to get Cade to confess to actually using the knife. And if he starts asking why he didn't call the police right away, he may scare Cade into asking for a lawyer. You said you got in a scuffle with this guy, and were you guys exchanging punches? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that I punched him at all. I know that he punched me. <laughs> he punched me, but I don't know that I punched him. No, you said that, uh, you said that, uh, that you were going to stick him. What, what did you mean by that? I had my pocket knife. I said, "You get off me, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab you, stick you, stab you." I and you know, at this point, I didn't know how many freaking guys were hitting me. I was kind of scared, you know. I was dazed. That first hit about knocked me out. Um, yeah, I didn't. Do you remember stabbing this guy at all? I, I can't remember what position we were in when it happened. I can't remember if if we were on the ground, if if we were standing up. I can't, I can't remember the exact, the exact position. But, but did you stab him? Yes. 
Yeah, I'd ask, do, do you know how many times you said I, I, I don't. More than once? I think twice? So. I think so. Maybe I couldn't tell you the exact amount. Is uh, this this cut, is that a, a result of... I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how that happened. I could have stabbed myself. I could have planned on glass. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. It, so this this altercation sure um, started as you were outside waiting for the cab just talking to a girl yes and he said something to you yeah he said something do, do you remember what that was he said i, I don't I did remember. he did he like immediately like challenge you after that like come up and get in your face or did you go over and confront him do you remember how that no he went? said something he said something <coughs> said something negative and i caught it and said I can't even remember. I said I just remember saying, "Oh, you're that kid, you know that." I said, "You're that fucker that said me and my buddy are gay together." Blah 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 blah. I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the first thing that I said to him. And then it just kind of escalated yeah, yeah. after that. Yep. But you don't remember uh, if you had got into the cab before this or after this? No. And see, that's where I'm getting blurry. Um, I want to say that maybe we got physical and and the cab driver witnessed it and I was getting in and he said no or maybe we were still yelling at each other and he said no I'm not taking it I, that's that's the one thing that I'm really confused about I'm not sure you know why he would kick me out or at what point in time it was that he decided that he didn't want to give me a ride so you know you said that uh you said that you noticed uh, the the blood that he was yeah. bleeding, yes, and, and it you, did. you and that scared you. It did, yes. And that was at, was that before or after you uh, stabbed him? That was after. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you don't recall maybe how many times you stabbed him. I don't. I don't recall where the times. where you stabbed him. Um, I want to say in the back, maybe like uh, I know that we were we were wrapped up. I think. Like face to face? Well, you know, kind of like in a clinch. I don't know if he had a hold of me, if I had a hold of him, but I'm pretty sure it was. Were you on the ground? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember if I was on my knees or if we were standing up. That's the part that I don't remember, but I know it's either in the side or in, in the lower back area. Okay. And you, and you think it was more than once, but you're not. I sure. think so, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you. Um, did you say anything else to him while this was going on, while the fight was going on, after he said, I'm going to stick you or stab you? Did you... I just warned him, you know, I just said, if I get off me or I'm going to stab you, I'm going to stick you. Um, after, after he got up and I saw the blood... Uh, Did you say anything to him at that point? I, I think I said, oh, fuck, you're bleeding bad. And I think that's the last thing that I said. Okay. Now that they have his confession, they have to find out if Kate acted in self-defense or not. They don't have any video surveillance footage, so they are relying on only testimony to find out what happened. Kate told the detective that he believed he was being attacked by more than one person, so now the detective has to find out if there were more people involved. So, I just, I just want to clarify buy something because I, I don't know how many people are involved yet okay um, because you you know the way you kind of describe this to me it you know I, I just want to make sure I got everybody involved sure. so you said that when this this fight was taking place and uh, you're kind of wrapped up with him or whatever you said it felt like or you thought maybe there was multiple people involved yeah well you know, initially it was just me and him, I know that, but I got hit. You know, he hit me first, he, he whacked me. From there it's kind of a blur. I know at some point we went down to the ground. I remember, I remember, you know, he had me and it was like uppercuts. You know, I don't know if I got kicked in the ribs or something. Or but I you got, didn't actually see anybody else, you just... All I, all I could just see was a blow. I could see was punches and black, basically. You know, I was... Okay, but you didn't actually see anybody else, though. So. No, he was just talking about his buddies, and 
you know, they're going to give me blah, 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 blah before anything even went down. But you hadn't had seen them? No. He was no. just sitting there with the girl? It was him and the girl, and I don't know if, if some, some other people had made their way out. You know, while we right. were having our discussion, right. or okay. or if they were on the corner, or if they're waiting, you know, I I'm not sure. But you didn't I actually see, see anybody, though. I don't, I don't, no, I didn't see anybody else hitting me. Besides, okay. maybe his girlfriend might have kicked me in the ribs, or if somebody else may have. But you're just on my basing that upon. Yeah, when I got hit, when I got hit, I was, you know, I was at the ground and I was seeing the ground, folks. So, um, now this this guy, I think I touched on it a little bit before. Did, did you have any other knowledge of this guy or dealings with this guy other than the press box incident? No, the pocket. Or the, sorry, the pocket. Yep, no, that's it. I've seen him. I know I've seen him before, but other than well, you know, you know, exchanging you know, or talking, that's it. Okay, so just, just the pocket was the only time. Yeah. And that was a couple weeks ago. Months. Maybe maybe a month maybe a month ago. Okay. Yeah. Weeks. Weeks for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um now okay, the the knife. Which pocket did you have that in? I think I had, I always carry it in my right. Your right pocket just with the with the clip. clip. Yeah, inside my pocket. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you remember um when you grabbed it out, did you? I don't remember. I don't remember. Do you? I don't remember grabbing it out. Don't remember grabbing it. Do you remember I did, but you were I holding it? I don't remember grabbing it out, opening it. I don't remember any of that, but I know I did it. If that makes sense. Um, at what point did you put it away? Do you remember putting it away? I don't remember putting it away either. Obviously, I made it back. You know, right. made it back with me, but I don't remember. I don't remember putting it away, no. okay. The interrogation plays out for another 30 minutes. The detective asks more questions about the fight, while Cade answers each one, explaining that he felt in fear for his life. Even though Cade's story does reflect a person in danger with no other option but to pull out a knife, there are two things that still don't make any sense. Why did he stab Jeremiah 13 times, and why didn't he call the police after he got away? The detective will now confront him and tell him exactly what happened to Jeremiah. With well, that said, okay, there's just a couple things here that, okay. that we're going to have to deal with, okay? Um, first part is, okay, is, okay, this, this guy, um, you know, I, I don't, you don't know how many times you stabbed him. Do you have any idea? Multiple. Multiple. Okay. Um, I can give you a, even a close number. I know more than once. So. Okay, it, and, and that's kind of my issue with this with this incident that happened is because of the number of times this guy was stabbed. Okay, uh, you know I don't have an exact count uh, because the, the doc everything that's going on. Okay? okay, but it's I mean we're looking at 13, 14 times. Okay, okay. which is a lot. Okay, uh, you know a couple times I can see. You know, once, twice, three times, but when you start getting 10, 11, 12, 13, I mean, that's a lot of times to stab somebody. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and I and understand, I mean, you told me what happened, why you did, and everything like that, but I got to look at everything involved here sure. about what happened. Okay. So the, the number of times this guy was stabbed is, is, is a concern to me. Okay. okay. The second thing here, and, and this is probably going to be the hardest part to deal with. Okay, is is this guy's died? Okay. That's that's the tough part. Okay. No, no, no. No, no. Are you sure? Are you sure? He's no, no. So, so there's a, I mean, it's gonna, yeah, I can't imagine, you know, 
this is a difficult situation for everybody involved, okay? But obviously there's some things that, that still need to be done, okay? Okay. On my end, it, you know, there's, there's, it, it's my job to gather all the information, okay. put, the, put a case together, and the facts of what happened, you know, it all seems to come out in the end, okay? But, like I said, these two issues, okay, the, the fact that he was stabbed so many times, okay. and the fact that he's dead, okay? <sighs> You know, it doesn't leave me with a lot of choice here as to what as to what to do with you, okay? And you can probably understand that, right? Okay, so so you're you're gonna go to jail today. Okay. Okay. I don't know how long you're gonna be in there, okay? There's like I said, there's a lot of things still that needs to be done. So don't you know, don't count yourself out or anything like that, okay? Okay. But this is the process at this point. According to the information I have, this is kind of what we need to do. Okay. okay. So this is how it's going to go. Okay. Okay. You're welcome to talk to me anytime you want. Okay. <sighs> it, it, you know, if any other questions come up, I'll try to give you as much information as I can. But, you know, obviously this is still under investigation. And uh, some things are sensitive to that. Okay. Um, but uh, an officer's going to come in here and, and take you over to the jail, okay? Do you have any questions? Anything I can do for you right now? Uh, is there any way that you can tell their family? Sorry, but I didn't want this to happen. Yeah. Is there any way if you see him here? Is there, is there any way you could tell him that? We'll we'll pass that information on. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know there. It, it's it's good. It's a tragic incident that happened. Cade would take the case to trial, and he would be found guilty of manslaughter. He would receive 22 years in prison, and he would be eligible for parole after serving 10. The biggest thing in this case that helped Cade was the remorse he showed during the interrogation. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.